what are we even doing out here? Oh, you'll see. This might solve all our problems. What problems? Like our unceasing ability to find ourselves in unparalleled situations? I think you're making this worse for us. Maybe, but we're in too deep now. All right, let's keep searching. Right. Why would it be here? Oh, here it is. Pretty neat, right? How, how did, why does this happen every time I hang out with you? Oh, well, it can't be that bad, right? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, you can't be serious. This is all your fault, Rai. In 2007, Naughty Dog released Uncharted Drake's Fortune on the PlayStation 3, becoming a brand new franchise for the company. Uncharted surrounds the character Nathan Drake as he, his friend Sully, and news reporter Elena Fisher discover the secrets hidden in the island of El Dorado. It is well recognized for its clever dialogue and dynamic between the three characters, and is an example of how to make people care about the protagonists. But not everyone plays it for the story. To some, the hidden skips and tricks are their biggest motivation to play the game. This well thought out title has one of the most complicated histories in the entirety of speedrunning. How is the community going to overcome the hurdles standing in their way? This is the insane history of Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Uncharted was a success when it first launched. Running at a solid 30 frames per second, Naughty Dog clearly put all their effort into this game. Though despite the positive attention it received, this was during a time when speedrunning wasn't as popular. In 2009, a forum was created for Uncharted 1 and many people expressed excitement toward running the game. Routes were theorized and put to the test for a few years, but no one recorded a full run. Then, in late 2012, a user named An Empty Box shared a YouTube video of the first glitches found in Uncharted. Findlestick, one of the most famous glitch hunters, began breaking the game. In July 2012, he uploaded his first and biggest find. Collision in Uncharted is, to put it lightly, scuffed. There are many slanted areas that don't quite work with Nate, and Findlestick discovered how to exploit it. Pressing the circle button on the PlayStation controller makes Nate do a rolling maneuver. By having Nate roll on slanted ground and press the left trigger at just the right time, he can do this. Findlestick can launch way higher than intended. This prompted Findle to search everywhere, seeing how many spots this can be performed. Eventually, he stumbles across this corner in Chapter 13. When Nate launches to the top floor of the building, this skips all of Chapter 14. That's right, this single launch skips an entire chapter by getting to the second floor early. This saves nearly 10 minutes. As he kept exploring, he found more glitches in different chapters and displayed them on his channel. He carved out the path for speedrunners to begin the game's history. These videos inspired the first player to take the plunge and start speedrunning. This runner's name is Dr. Zaff. In 2012 and 2013, Zaff hunted for new skips. He wasn't alone, as his friend Mrs. Gizamaluk assisted in his endeavors. Together, these two intrepid explorers became the first to create a speedrun route for Uncharted 1. There was just one problem. This was during a time when getting decent video of games wasn't commonplace among many players, and for a while, Zaff and Giz had no video to prove their findings. Despite this, the two continued to work as a team and discover more glitches. Finally, in February 2014, Zaff got his hands on a capture card for the first time. Just a few days later, Zaff recorded a session of speedrun attempts. Zaff showed off discoveries he and Giz found throughout the game, especially when it came to launches. In the beginning of the second chapter, he performed a small launch to reach the boulder atop the temple faster. Chapter 5, 6, and 13 each had their own unique launches that saved between 10 seconds to multiple minutes of gameplay. These glitches were incredible, but lots of the time saved was negated by Uncharted 1's infamous combat encounters. 
Sometimes they aren't a huge deal, other times they can be deadly. The behavior of each enemy is completely random and hard to predict. Even when things go well, they can take a long time to defeat. Going into the last few chapters, Zaf was half a minute ahead of his best time, and if he wanted to improve, he needed to finish it off strong. With a solid punch to the face, Zaf completed the first recorded run of Uncharted 1. He knew he had many minutes left to save, so it wasn't a surprise when he came back a few months later and got a faster time. If sub 2 hours seemed like a good goal, Zaf won up to that milestone with a time under an hour and 50 minutes. This improvement may seem crazy, but he had 5 minutes of time save in Chapter 6 alone due to enemy RNG. Random number generation is how the NPCs choose their actions, such as where they walk or where they shoot. It takes just a few lucky shots to take down the player, which can mean the difference between a good and bad time. In Chapter 18, Zaf spotted the biggest skip so far. Below this platform is a large death plane that automatically kills Nate if he touches it. Underneath this plane is the last major section of Chapter 19. Zaf knew a skip was begging to be found here, and he was right. By positioning Nate at the corner of this platform and jumping forward at the correct angle, he lands on top of these pipes and barely misses the death plane. All it took was one jump, and Zaf skipped over 5 minutes of gameplay. With a gargantuan lead over his personal best, he took out the rest of the enemies and clocked in an amazing time. The route was coming together, but this wasn't the end for Zaf. On July 29th, he performed Uncharted at the ESA speedrun marathon with his friend Giz by his side. Zaf performed all the launches in the run, doing quite well for a marathon event. In fact, he adds a brand new sky launch into the mix. Yeah, that's Ooh, nice. nice. The, the great one. Yeah, that's the, the great one. launch, nice. That's a good launch. With his confidence heightened, he doesn't shy away from showing off the rest of the skips. By chapter 16, Zaf is nearly 6 minutes ahead of his time, and he continues to hold the lead until the very end. And time. Nice. 1.40, 1.56. Oh, nice. <laughs> well recorded. Yeah, well recorded. Yeah. Nice. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for joining me. He played it off cool, but he beat the record by a lot. This wasn't just another practice session, he did this during a live-streamed marathon in front of many viewers. But just days later, Zaf discovered a game-breaking trick that changed the speedrun entirely. The following month, he used it in his next personal best. The new tech he found is Crouch Wall Breaches. This glitch is in the same vein as Sky Launches because it can be performed in many places. In Chapter 2, wiggling the joystick left and right continuously on this cover spot makes Nate slowly clip inside of the wall. When Zaf's far enough inside, he walks along the out-of-bounds area and jumps through the wall directly into the water below. This is just one of 11 different clips that he found. There were even more breaches than sky launches. At the end of the run, Zaf completely shatters an unthinkable barrier. Nice. Nice, I got one th sub 130. One hour and 29 minutes. This was over half an hour faster than his first recorded speedrun. Zaf and Giz both had a huge impact on the game's progression. After two years, they decided it was time to sit back and relax from the grind. Soon, Zaf wouldn't be the only one contending the Uncharted record. In fact, he was the catalyst for what was to come next because a revolution is on the rise. This is no fair! Why won't they let me shoot them? You sound like a threat right now. Only when the time calls for it. Ugh, this is soul crushing. Wait, did you check your difficulty settings? That exists? Oh! Well there, now all my problems are fixed. In the coming months after Zaf's record, another runner named Thronus, also known as Thrill UK, lowered his personal best. First, he got a 124.52, close to a 5 minute improvement on Zaf. Thrill ironed out the edges of the run, completely destroying multiple minute barriers. 
Crouch breaches became a challenge though. Performing a single one requires quick back and forth movement for up to half a minute, which takes its toll over the course of an hour long run. However, that September, a new runner named Silence Erupts took an interest in the Uncharted series. Silence was experienced in other speedruns, so this wasn't his first time hunting for glitches. In fact, it only took three weeks of playing to find the most broken mechanic in the entire game. Crouch breaches can only be performed when in a cover spot, limiting its use. This all changed on September 26, 2014, when Silence published a video that turned the speedrun on its head. First, he performs a new crouch clip that lands him out of bounds into the water, which sends him directly into Chapter 10. This alone was a massive time save, but what he did next defined the course of uncharted speedrunning forever. This is aim clipping. If the player faces parallel to a wall while holding out the pistol and presses the aim button rhythmically while moving against it, Nate will slowly phase through until he emerges on the other side. This clip on its own skips most of chapter 10, and the best part is it can be performed almost anywhere in the game. Silence scoured the land and came up with more time saves than he could have imagined. With a huge find like this, it's only a matter of time before someone uses it in a full speedrun, and soon enough, Thrill did the unthinkable and achieved the first record under one hour. This was incredible, but Thrill was still unsatisfied. His solution, of course, was to beat it by another six minutes. Unthinkable barriers were being broken left and right, and one could say that he was thrilled. So, how were these times achieved? Where are all of Thronus's records? Unfortunately, all of them no longer exist. The footage of these runs were around long ago, but they have since been lost and none of his records have ever been recovered. There may be no video left, but that doesn't change that Thrill had a massive impact on the speedrun. He pushed the time over a monstrous barrier, and other runners picked up where he left off. Speaking of which, another runner named Mark118 was the next upcoming Uncharted speedrunner to enter the scene. Not long after he started, he got a new world record, this time with surviving video. Over 37 minutes faster than the last record with proof, Mark stepped up and made it to the top. Mark utilized over 20 different aim clips to skip a plethora of areas. Chapter 20 is tedious because the area is crawling with enemies that must be defeated in order to progress. Aim clips finally put an end to the monotony. Mark not only clips through the giant door to skip the combat encounter, he follows it up by aim clipping into the table at the end of the cathedral to trigger the chapter 21 cutscene. In the blink of an eye, over 5 minutes of fighting is eliminated from the run. During the final chapter, Mark aim clips one one more time on the ship to sneak past all the enemies, and runs up to claim his world record. Forget about sub hour, a time under 50 minutes was more than possible. The following week, Silence himself improved and barely beat Mark's record. To add on to the new pile of skips, he utilized a launch at the beginning of Chapter 5. First, he grabs this vine which forces the camera to pan around the building, and then mashes the jump button when grabbing it again. For a very strange reason, this launches him on top of the fortress and past the enemy trigger. Combined with a new clip through this gate, this is over two minutes faster. In the bunker, Zaf's skip to chapter 19 was cool, and Mark's crouch clip method was super neat, but nothing can beat the power of aim clips. Beyond this gate is the trigger to enter chapter 20. Silence performs an aim clip through until he's standing inside of the gate and turns his camera toward the ladder. Using a well-angled jump, he lands on the ladder and enters chapter 20, skipping the entirety of chapter 19. He finished the run strong with a 51-56, becoming both a legendary glitch hunter and a world record holder. Considering how many tricks there are, it's impossible to be flawless and perfect all the way through. Regardless, these are some of the most most important runs ever performed in the game's history. Silence was satisfied with his time and went on to other games to start his next adventure. It only took another month for new runners to carry the torch. In early November, Oven Donkey started climbing up the ranks. Coming from prior glitch hunting experience, Donkey learned about uncharted speedrunning from his friend Fire Dragon who ran the game on occasion. Donkey set a new record using all of Silence's strategies while adding in a few new ones to the mix. 
At the end of the jet ski segment in Chapter 8, Donkey shoots this weapon right before he triggers the cutscene. This may seem random, but this was a calculated input and it's related to Nate's speed. Nate has three different speeds, his walking speed, running speed, and combat speed. Walking speed occurs when Nate is in a safe area, such as the beginning of Chapter 2, the bridge in Chapter 11, and many other areas. Nate gets running speed during platforming sections when no enemies are nearby, and in this case, it's faster to jump continuously rather than running. Combat speed, the fastest of the three variants, only happens in the middle of battle. Or at least, that's how it's supposed to work. In Mark's run before the last cutscene of Chapter 3, he runs toward the trigger while gunning down the last enemy. Because he has combat speed going into the trigger, his speed remains activated into Chapter 4, saving over half a minute on Silence's run. Back to Donkey, he fires right before hitting the cutscene, which keeps his combat speed activated all the way from Chapter 8 to the end of Chapter 11. This strat, along with solid movement, earned him a time of 50 minutes and 16 seconds. The record fell by nearly 40 minutes in less than 3 months, and all it took was one new strategy. Oh, there is one more very important aspect of Uncharted speedrunning, and that is the checkpoint system. In each area, there are triggers placed in specific spots around the game that keep track of where the player is supposed to spawn if they die. For example, there's a checkpoint trigger that, when activated, will become Nate's spawn point if he dies. However, if it extends farther than intended, the player can touch the trigger, die, and spawn ahead of where they're supposed to be. Why is this important? Because there is an option in the menu settings that allows players to restart from the last checkpoint they hit. When Donkey clips through this gate in Chapter 13, there's a checkpoint trigger on the other side. Through trial and error, Donkey knows exactly where it is, and when he hits it, he restarts from the last checkpoint. Now he's on the second floor of the building, and has created a much easier method to skip Chapter 14. These resets are used in many places, and they can even be used to skip cutscenes, which save a handful of seconds each. Sub 50 was on the cusp of being achieved, and it was only a matter of time. On November 11th, the milestone was shattered by Mark. His run was amazing, and he nailed all the tricks faster than anyone else in history. He added a new aim clip in Chapter 13 that skips an enemy trigger, which confirmed he wouldn't be unfairly gunned down. After executing all of the remaining tricks with great precision, Mark ended with the first time under 50 minutes. Now that another major barrier was broken, it makes sense to think that activity slowed down from this point on. In actuality, however, runners picked up the pace. The progression of the game's history is still in its early stages, and these players didn't stop here. Mark and Donkey lowered their times as far as they could go, and shaped uncharted speedrunning as we know it. Oh, yes, okay, sub 49, that is new world record for Uncharted Drake's fortune. <laughs> I did not expect that this run at all. Before the one year anniversary of Dr. Zaff's first record, Donkey and Mark pushed it over an hour and 15 minutes faster. There were a few new time saves introduced, but most of the improvement came from a lot of practice. 
The route is much more polished, and there's still a lot of work to be done. However, there wasn't much activity following this run for over a year. Both players pushed the time to its limits, and they were content with their personal bests. On the first day of March 2016, a new record was completed by Shine69 and he broke another minute barrier. They gained an early lead because of their fast clip into the boat in Chapter 3 and used a few new strategies here and there. The highlight was at the end during the final fight, where the player is supposed to hide behind a few boxes before attacking Navarro. Since that's slow and lame, Shine manipulates his AI by running to the right and taking cover at the same time. This makes Navarro approach Nate on his own, giving him an opportunity to attack 10 seconds earlier than normal. Shine gets a 45-20, putting himself over a minute ahead of anyone else. This put the run to rest for a while, and Shine continued to do amazing speedruns in the other categories. Unbeknownst to everyone, this downtime may have been what the game needed. In the coming months, two new runners began their journey to find El Dorado, who became some of the greatest players in Uncharted speedrunning. The first to show their talent was Matt Matt. Coming in with experience from Naughty Dog's other titles, Matt came in strong when learning Uncharted and lowered the record by 11 seconds. He was the first player to get a record after Shine, and he remained on top for a long time. He was a new record holder, but there's still another player who wasn't messing around. This is Arams. In November 2017, Arams began a run with his sights set on taking the record. By Chapter 3, he already shook the pot when he used a new launch to fly over the enemies in the temple. In the following chapter, he brought back Zaf's launch that remained unused due to its inconsistency. If that wasn't enough, he aim clipped into a different spot in Chapter 13 that required an interesting technique. When he clips through this wall, Arams pauses while in the empty void. By pausing, the game is given enough time to load more of the level around Nate, which allows Arams to unpause and get to Chapter 15 even faster. A few major skips later, Arams completes the fastest run with a 44 minutes and 16 second time. This run had new launches never used before, faster skips and precise movement, and a really clean ending. This was technically a record. But wait, why technically? Clearly it's the fastest run that's ever been completed for the game, and that's true for the PlayStation 3 version. But the PS3 is just one part of this story. Back in early 2015, Oven Donkey ran Uncharted 1 at Awesome Games Done Quick and showed all of the skips he and other runners found. There's something about this vine that just doesn't work right and I'm going to jump against this until something happens. See how long it takes. There it is. Oh, second try. <laughs> So I was just in chapter 13 like a minute ago, now I'm in chapter 15, and I'm about to start 16. <laughs> so... <laughs> I just started chapter 18, which is the chapter where you go into the Nazi bunker and learn what's actually going on. But I don't feel like doing any of that, especially because it's really scary and I don't want to be scared during my speed run. So I just skipped ahead to chapter 20. That whole chapter <laughs> is too spooky. <laughs> Time, 5102. Pretty good. The audience loved the run, and Donkey was happy with his performance. Though, the audience wasn't the only people that loved the show. A little while after AGDQ, Donkey received a message directly from the creators of Uncharted, Naughty Dog, and was given a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to work for the company. He accepted their offer, and officially became a part of the Naughty Dog team. Donkey received a lot of info about future projects for the PlayStation 4, such as Uncharted 4 and The Last of Us Part 2. He was also informed about the Nathan Drake collection coming to PS4, containing the first three games in one package planned to release later that year. Donkey was brought on to test the games, and during a playthrough, he showed off the aim clip glitch to Naughty Dog. A debate sparked on whether they should patch out aim clipping or leave it in for the new release. Donkey advocated for the glitch to stay unpatched, as many runners would be less than pleased to see one of the most insane strategies get fixed. This conversation went all the way to the higher-ups, and a decision needed to be made. 
Eventually, Evan Wells, the head of Naughty Dog, chose to leave Aim Clipping unpatched for its PS4 release. Because of Donkey's efforts, Aim Clips officially remain a part of Uncharted 1's legacy. Naughty Dog chose to make speedrunners a part of their player base, even adding speedrun timers to the collection. When the games released on PS4 in October 2015, the progression of the game continued to remain strong and unbroken. This was the start of a new chapter for Uncharted speedrunning. Uncharted on the PlayStation 4 wasn't much different than the original on the surface. Aside from removing motion control gimmicks and improving graphics, this was the same game players knew and loved. Some PS4-specific records were set during the first few months of its release. Prominent runners including Covert Madness, Zonerous, Hutch T, and former PS3 record holders Matt Metz and Mark traded the fastest time over the course of 2015 and early 2016. PS4 has an advantage because the developers added a new difficulty setting called Explorer. The setting makes the enemies deal less damage than on easy mode. This made the final boss much easier because players can rush Navarro before before losing all of their health. In December 2015, Mark completed the first run that was faster than PS3. From here on out, PS4 continued to stray farther from the PS3 progression. This was the last time the PS3 was faster than the PS4 record, and things were only going to get crazier. In January 2016, Matt Matt found new game-breaking tech that can potentially lower the record by over 10 minutes. Matt named the trick Airwalking, and shortly after he shared his new insane discovery, it was banned. The player must have an already completed save file to perform the glitch. The reason being, new options are available in the menu after the game has been completed, one of them including Super Slow Mode. By holding forward while mashing the aim button in Super Slow Mode, Nate obtains the ability to go through walls. Players can quite literally walk past multiple chapters in a row and skip nearly half of the campaign. This not only takes away from the spirit of the game, but it's almost impossible to perform airwalks without these custom options that are only available on a completed save. For the sake of the speedrun, Matt decided to ban the trick entirely. Records progressed without airwalking, and the majority of players agreed this was the right decision. In February, Hutch T claimed a time of 46.08, another new record for PlayStation 4. Yes! Yes! All oh, these bits Yes! Ah! Yes! At long last, he finally got the fastest PS4 time in the world. But nobody was ready for what was going to happen next. Right after Hutch T's record, Arams came in swinging and beat his time. This was his first submitted Uncharted speedrun, and it was just the first of many records he set that month. On February 11th, 2016, Arams pushed it all the way down to a 43.37, a faster time than he would eventually get on the PS3 version. He improved a lot over the course of his journey so far, and used a few new tricks he and others found. The PS4 version added a new feature to the Uncharted series called Photo Mode, which lets players take a snapshot of any in-game moment they want. After Arams does the aim clip through the wall in Chapter 8, he goes up the stairs and jumps into the unloaded area as normal. When Arams is in mid-air, he activates Photo Mode and moves the camera to load the collision underneath him. This is a much more consistent way of skipping from Chapter 8 to 10 that wasn't possible on the PS3 version. Another use of Photo Mode was before the puzzle in Chapter 15, and is one of the only remaining crouch breach skips. Arams crouches through the wall and does an aim clip to get all the way through, then jumps toward the void and uses photo mode to load in the tunnel. This skips another puzzle and saves roughly 10 seconds. Arams uses these new skips to secure a new world record, and he was far from done. On February 28th, Arams got the first 42 minute time using the same strategies, and improved his time again on March 16th. He was getting better and better, and his momentum was unstoppable. He improved his record again a couple days later, but this one uses a new strategy that hasn't been seen for quite some time. Arams uses the Vine Launch, a trick gone unused in all of the PS4 runs until now. Why would a trick that saves so much time not be used for so long? Launches in Uncharted have never been very consistent, and their behavior differs depending on the version of the game. On PS3, for example, Vine Launch takes Nate way into the sky, but stays low enough 
enough to land on the ground afterwards without dying. If the launch is done on PS4, something different happens. Nate suffers from flying into space syndrome and the game decides to end him. But why does this happen? This is all because of the frame rate. The PS3 version runs at 30 frames per second, which makes the launches useful but not too overpowered. The PS4 version on the other hand runs at 60 frames per second, which makes the launches much greater. This is why many launches seen before were not used, because they no longer function the same. The only reason Arams was able to do the Vine launch was because he hit a cutscene trigger that stopped him from flying too high. He tried to go for the trick in his last two records and missed, but now that he he got it once, he was going to keep using it no matter what. For the next year, Arams shattered the former records into pieces. He kept his motivation alive, and nothing, not even bad enemy RNG, was going to get in his way. This is his moment to shine. was dangerously close to sub 40 minutes. The run was becoming insanely optimized, though the list of skips didn't grow that much. He used a new launch in Chapter 13 that took him to the second floor of the building faster, saving about 15 seconds. Other than that, the record came down because of better movement alone. That changed in August 2017, when Arams decided it was time to implement some more risky strategies. In the beginning of Chapter 2, there is a launch spot near this rock that sends Nate all the way to the temple. This can save up to 30 seconds if performed well. Another new launch was found next to the vine in Chapter 5, this one being faster and more consistent. By rolling on just the right part of the wall, Nate launches and immediately makes contact with the ground of the fortress rather than flying into the sky. These two new launches were huge finds, however they are really difficult to execute. But Arams was on another level of determination, and he used every opportunity he could to bring the time down. On August 21st, Arams booted up another run and got on a really strong start. He got the Chapter 2 launch first try, and nailed the aim clip right after, saving a lot of time over his personal best. Chapters 3, 4, and 5 went off without a hitch, ending the first half of the run over 40 seconds ahead. Arams played beautifully in Chapter 8, and skipped to Chapter 10 very quickly. When when he got to chapter 13, he was still far ahead, but he had one more new skip in store. Turns out, there was another launch that saved more time than the one he used previously, and it was right under the bridge. However, its consistency is low at best, and he needs to pull it off quickly to save time. Arams gets on the rock under the bridge and attempts the launch. He misses it once and lands in the water by accident. On his second try, he launches for a second but gets caught by the bridge. If he doesn't get this now, the run is dead in the water. Arams tries to get it one more time. After loading in the area with photo mode, he lands on the ground and proceeds to chapter 16. He lost a little time because of how long the trick took, but he still had a huge lead. He pulled off the chapter 18 to 20 skip first try, and got through the following enemy encounter like it was nothing. All Arams needed to do was take out Navarro and claim his treasure. Thank you. 
Sub-40 was utterly destroyed. This was an incredible accomplishment for Arams and for the growing community. After a long grind, he settled down and turned his attention toward his other goals. The world record stood still for a long time after Arams' leave, and it looked like it was going to remain that way for many years. 2018, no new records. 2019, no faster time to be seen. Then, in early 2020, someone new tried his luck at beating Arams' time. This runner, named Rocky, pushed the speedrun farther than anyone else in its history. I always thought you were bad at video games, but I gotta say, you're really bad at video games. Well, at least I'm not terrible. I try. Please. Alright, chapter 8. This should be fun. Oh no, not chapter 8. Do yourself a favor and burn the game now. What? It can't possibly be that bad. Do you think it's too late to return this game? After a year of being in the community, Rocky began doing competitive runs in Uncharted for the first time. He submitted his first speedrun with a 41-42, two and a half minutes behind Arams' sub-40 time. Rocky uses a new strategy in Chapter 20 that saves over 10 seconds, and he does it by dying. More specifically, by clipping outside of this wall and falling far enough down, the Chapter 21 cutscene activates early. This skips the tunnel portion of the area. This alone wasn't enough to get him close to the record. If Rocky wanted a chance at catching up to Arams, he needed to resort to the craziest tricks in the entire game. Luckily for him, there is one new skip he found that can destroy the record, but it's the most dangerous strategy in the entire game. Chapter 13 is one of the most broken segments. Time and time again, new things are found that break the chapter in half, but this one was the most unbelievable trick by a long shot. Rocky was exploring the second floor of the building one day, and found this corner that could be another potential launch spot. He rolled against it multiple times, and eventually launched way high in the air and zoomed across the sky. It was hard to tell where he was, and he used photo mode frequently to load the area around him. When he landed, he realized he didn't just find a small skip. Rocky launched from Chapter 13 all the way to Chapter 18. Over six minutes of the run was eliminated with this one skip. Rocky knew he had to take advantage of this opportunity. On June 15th, Rocky got on a run that was actually pretty far behind, about 20 seconds slower than his personal best. Under normal circumstances, he would have reset and started a new attempt, but he didn't need to simply because of how much time the new launch saves. When he got to the spot, he was over a minute and 30 seconds behind his personal best. He got stuck on the launch for another half minute before getting it, now over two minutes behind. Once he got the launch, all of the time lost from before completely cancelled out. One moment, he was 3 minutes behind Arams, and the next, he was 1 minute and 40 seconds ahead going into chapter 20. Rocky just did a legendary trick, and his nerves were getting out of control. He kept himself together, and did the chapter 20 skips with little trouble. Now, he just needs to have a decent finish to get the record. On the boat, the enemies shot him down once, losing a little bit of time. It was only minor time loss, nothing to be worried about. Rocky reaches the final boss and rushes in to take him down. Oh, for fuck's sake. For the first time, Rocky fails the quick time event to finish, forcing him to restart the fight. His heart is beating fast, it's hard to think. He's on the cusp of being the first person to beat Arams after his four year domination. Rocky tries to finish the fight again. Can we tell that I'm panicking? What the f actually? This never happened before. The record was right there for the taking. Why was this simple quick time event that he'd done hundreds of times becoming a challenge? Rocky's heart is pounding out of his chest, wondering to himself how he's letting this stand in his way. He was on the verge of giving up entirely, but he took a deep breath and went to finish the fight one more time. Finally! <laughs> For 
was, I'm so sorry. I was having a fucking nervous breakdown. I'm so sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. I started burning up when I got to the church. Every input was like, what the fuck do I do? Thanks a lot for the GGs. I really appreciate it. It wasn't clean, but he persevered through his nerves and made it to the finish line. This is an incredibly important run, not just for the progression, but for Rocky. He faced one of the hardest challenges in speedrunning. Yes, performing the new launch was difficult, but getting through his mental block was his greatest achievement. He kept going, and he still got the record. This was an amazing moment for him and for the community as a whole. It didn't take long for Arams to realize his record was no more, and on cue, he returned after a three-year hiatus. On the 1st of July, Arams set a new record. He spent a similar amount of time trying to get to the courtyard launch, but benefited from landing in front of the ladder. He also had a great beginning and ending to his run with only two unwanted deaths, finishing with a time of 36-16. This was a big leap. Arams showed how far the run can still be pushed, and this was enough to motivate Rocky to come back and reclaim the record he worked so hard for. Rocky practiced into the month of August and got onto many decent paces. The courtyard launch is very inconsistent, and it's responsible for ending many runs. Come August 26th, he was pretty far behind due to the Chapter 2 launch not cooperating. Otherwise, the run was going pretty well. In the Blue Room in Chapter 5, Rocky used a new strategy to fill the place with water in a quicker manner. Normally, the crank next to this gate cannot be interacted with until all the enemies have been defeated. In the early days, Oven Donkey discovered aim clipping through this gate and back made the crank go from inactive to active without taking down the goons. Rocky added on to the strategy to save more time. By clipping halfway into this wall and jumping toward the ledge, Rocky gets to the last crank early, which makes the water rise to the top without turning the others. This cuts out some platforming and saves close to 30 seconds if done first try. Despite this new time save, the biggest hurdle was coming up. Rocky approached the skip by doing a mini launch to get on the second floor faster, and he prepared for takeoff. He rolled against the corner again, and again, and again. If directing the launch wasn't hard enough, trying to get it in the first place is the most enraging part of it all. Eventually, he got the launch to work and he landed nicely, but by that point, he already lost over 90 seconds. Rocky continued the run and achieved a clean ending. He got the aim clips on the boat first try and succeeded all the quick time events. He didn't get the record, but he improved his personal best by close to a minute. Rocky looked at his final time and knew that if he could get a solid courtyard launch, he might be able to snag the record back. The following day, he began another run that was going really well. He was lined up with Aram's pace through Chapter 3, and he had one more launch up his sleeve. Each combat encounter went smoothly, and he went on the jet ski segments without any complications. Once he got to Chapter 13, he took a deep breath and set up the launch. This time, it only took him 20 seconds, saving over a minute on his best time. All that's left is the last few minutes of the run, and nothing slowed him down. Rocky claimed the record again after many hardships. He helped push Uncharted so far, and is responsible for finding many of the launches in the run. This wasn't just a speedrun to him, this was a part of his journey as a member of the community. Two weeks following his time, Rocky created a tutorial for the speedrun and explained all the tricks in great detail. He decided to step away from world record competition after this run, and soon, Arams followed up. In early November, Arams completed another run that beat Rocky by 15 seconds. However, there's still more potential. He used a new launch in Chapter 13 to reach 
reached the building faster and got the courtyard launch on his very first try. He was a minute ahead of Rocky's time in Chapter 20, and he was on pace to get the first 34 minute time. That was until disaster struck and he missed the cutscene trigger for Chapter 21. When he got the trick on his next try, he lost most of his lead over Rocky. He finished with a new record, but was understandably upset. With a mistake that large, there was no way he was going to leave the time there. Arams kept pushing himself to perfect his movement and technique. 11 days later on November 17th, 2020, his efforts paid off. He had a mediocre start, but Aram still had a lot of ground to cover. He was 25 seconds behind, but after doing the chapter 4 launch and getting a clean clip into the forest, he saved 40 seconds. Okay, we got it. Nice. He got the crank skip in chapter 5, cleared through the enemies with no problem, and still remained on decent pace going into the end game. Chapter 13 was the last major obstacle. Oh, it's too high. F you game. <laughs> I got really lucky. Okay, let's just pray that this time the game let me roll. Thank you. Thirty-four was done, and the run is completely destroyed. He was the king of mastering launches and implementing tricks most people would never go for. Arams was at the top, and no one was ever going to take him down. But this progression seems empty. Since the PS4 became the main version of the game, only two different people ever held the record. This wasn't because Uncharted is a bad speed game, far from it. The problem is how inconsistent the launches are. The sheer number of them turned many runners away, with only a handful using them in runs. This meant even fewer actually stood a chance at achieving the record. Seeing how launches affected the enjoyment of the game, discussion for a solution took place in the community. After members voiced their opinions, the majority came to the same resolve. The main any% percent run was split into two different subcategories. One allows launches, which includes all of Aramis' and Rocky's records. The other category bans launches altogether. This became the main speedrun for most Uncharted runners and attracted much more competition. But what was the fastest time that didn't use launches? From 2016 to 2019, Hutch T, Yoranto, and Matt Matt each traded the record with no launches. The title ultimately goes to Hutch T, who got a 41 31 without a single launch. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? The speedrun with launches was insane. How far can the time go without them? With the new changes in place, Hutch T officially held the no launches record. He set this back in 2019 as a personal best, but when the split took place, it became the fastest launchless time. It was a solid run too, as Hutch remained ahead of his previous best all the way through. He also got his fastest completed segments of the last three chapters, finishing strong. Two years later, this was still on top. Since this is an older run, some strategies like the crank skip and the early chapter 21 cutscene trigger weren't used. There's still more to be saved, and a certain someone showed just how much. Mm -hmm. 
wasting no time, Arams claimed the no launches record just two days after the category split. Other runners watching live congratulated him, and for the rest of 2021, that's where the time stood. Every time someone had the record, if for just a month, a couple weeks, Arams kept coming back to astonish the community. He was always one step ahead, and nobody could touch him. However, after many months, there was a glimmer of hope in the distance. Someone knew who could take down Arams. This is Melon. Starting his speedrunning career in 2020, Melon was experienced in the Uncharted world. His earliest runs were in Uncharted 4, and he broadened his horizons toward the first game in the series. For a while, he sat far down the leaderboard as he took a break from speedrunning Uncharted 1. A year and a half later, the game called back, motivating him to return and take a shot at the record. On January 6th, 2022, Melon returned with a fire never seen before. Melon achieved his first record and beat Arams in the process. A month ago, he was 15th on the boards, and now he was at the very top. Despite this, he remained humble. That run still. Oh. Considering he just claimed his first record in a competitive game, Melon was chill about his accomplishment. Sub 40 is the holy grail for the no launch time. Without launches, chapters 16 and 17 are back in the run, which adds another 6 minutes. If sub 40 happens without launches, it without a doubt will become one of the greatest uncharted speedruns of all time. However, his time at the top didn't last long. That same day, Aram streamed another session of attempts. How does he keep firing back every time? It seems like it's impossible for him not to have the record at any given time, no matter what. That's not to say he was perfect. Crank Skip gave Arams a hard time, and it didn't help that the enemies were less than friendly. Though he was a couple seconds behind, his late game was very clean, putting him on the verge of sub 40. If anybody was going to get the first 39 minute time, it was going to be Arams. His endgame was very strong, nailing the Cathedral aim clip and the early Chapter 21 cutscene. He got through the final stretch and checked to see if he broke through the 40 minute barrier. Even with an amazing ending, Arams missed 39 by 11 seconds. He was so close to tilting the run over the edge, but a 40-10 was still an impressive time. Melon congratulated Arams on his record, but he knew he needed to strike back. After all, he only had the record for a few hours. Beating Arams again was going to be a huge challenge, and with how fast he is at reclaiming the record, was it worth it? It took longer than expected for a new record to be set. An entire month passed by, and then finally, the run was completed. It's a sub 40. <laughs> <laughs> Melon broke through the biggest barrier in the game's history. He didn't give up, and his determination ultimately paid off. There were mistakes that cost him some time, but in a run with so many strategies, he did amazing. This is one of the most legendary uncharted runs ever completed. Four and a half years after the first sub 40 was done, Melon is the first person to achieve under 40 minutes without launches. Now that the biggest barrier has been defeated, where's the run going to go now? Well, there's no other direction to go than down. 
Arams lowered the record two more times following Mellon. First, he got a 39-42 on June 7th, and a 39-34 the following day. He improved on some time losses Mellon had during his sub-40 run, and Arams was happy with his progress. He took another hiatus, confident that he was going to stay on top for a while. Panzer Deer, an embraced member of the Uncharted community, has been on a long journey. Since 2016, he always loved watching GDQ runs live and seeing players break all types of games. He had trouble finding any title that he wanted to speedrun. Then he found Uncharted and fell in love with the speedrun. He started doing any percent runs in 2020 and remained in the middle of the boards for a long time. In 2021, he locked in and jumped to second place just below Aaron's. Next, on January 5th, 2022, Panzer achieved a new personal best that was a mere two seconds behind. However, the following day, Melon got his 4018 and the record spiraled from there. He was just out of reach and it looked like his opportunity was gone. Then, in December, a Christmas miracle occurred when Panzer achieved his first ever sub-40 time. Oh, let's go! Oh my god, 39.57. He's one of only three runners to get a 39, and yet, he still never held the record. He strived to change that. In the beginning of February, Panzer grinded for new personal bests and committed himself to achieving his long-sought dream. A few days in, he was about even to his best time, which was only three seconds behind the record. Despite the ups and downs, he remained on par with Arams. Luckily for him, he has one more new strategy in Chapter 15 that allows him to get inside of the tunnel faster. But this trick is also significant because it replaces the very last Crouch Breach skip. Nine years after its discovery, Crouch Breaches have finally become obsolete and aim clips have carved the path forward. Panzer ran as fast as possible, on the verge of completing the run. After years of being just out of reach, he's in the perfect position to make his dream come true. Let's go! <laughs> oh my fucking god, bro, I can't believe it. Oh my fucking god, that's world record. <laughs> He did it. After grinding over and over, he accomplished his goal. He never could have imagined he was going to hold the most competitive record in the entire game. Panzer was proud of himself and is more than content with leaving his time there. He did more than just lower the record though. He motivated the two titans of Uncharted speedrunning to return. With Melon and Arams back in the game, the battle is on to see who's going to come out on top. Arams, the Uncharted veteran, has all the skills necessary to destroy the record. Melon, the rising star, is a determined player who has a chance of defeating Arams' reign once and for all. The race is on.
Uncharted has a special community. There's something that brought all these kind and caring players together. Whether they contest for the record, hunt for glitches, or work for the company, everyone has their own special place in its history. Melon has the current fastest time, but the end to one story is the start of another. What about the other titles in the franchise? Do they have the same glitches as the first game, or do they have a completely different story to tell? Time will tell what else is in store for the history of Uncharted speedrunning.